Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Welcome back to Watch and Learn, episode 91. Wow, come a long way. Today we're talking about quartz watches and their accuracy, and as it relates to the ticking frequency of the seconds hand. Spoiler alert, it's got nothing to do with it. Uh, this all stems from me now carrying Bulova and the Precisionist lineup, and I want to talk about that because a lot of people, I hear a lot of misconceptions online, I want to try to set some things straight if I can. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, Watch and Learn is a really long series of videos going back several years where I break down some complicated, some not so complicated watch topics uh, and explain them so everyone can understand them. If you're a very technically inclined person and you find some omissions, errors, feel free to put them in the comments below, but keep in mind, I probably know that I glossed over something rather important uh, just to kind of keep the video short. Speaking of short, no risk checks. Let's get on with it. So here we go. We're going to start our conversation briefly just talking about automatic mechanical watches. On the left, I have an Islander with a Miyota 9000 movement beating at, ready, 28,800 beats per hour. I want you to kind of remember those units, beats per hour. On the right is another Islander with a Seiko movement that beats at 21,600 beats per hour. What does that translate to? Well. The one on the left is considered a 4 hertz movement. A hertz is one total oscillation of the balance wheel. The one on the right is a 3 hertz movement. Double that to get how many times the seconds hand is ticking per second. The left one ticking 8 times per second. The right one ticking 6 times per second. It's generally um, believed that the higher beat rate will be more accurate in a mechanical watch simply because there's more time to average out any um, inconsistencies, perturbations, whatever it might be in the mechanical system. Uh, so you have a larger averaging sample. It generally holds to be true um, with automatic mechanicals and simply also because not only because of that factor but because just higher beat rates are generally just higher quality movements. Take your Zenith El Primero 36000 which is 10 ticks per second. It's just a more expensive movement, more refined so you'll get more accuracy out of them. So again generally your higher beats will be more accurate though not always 100% true and I will just throw it in here now just for interest there is a mechanical complication called a dead beat seconds which translates these movements in a complicated watch uh, to one tick per second. So it's kind of interesting that they do that. Let's uh, bring our discussion to quartz. So let's get into our quartz watches. Um, I have three quartz watches for you. Quartz meaning they run on a battery with a quartz oscillator as uh, the regulation mechanism. Which one do you think is the most accurate? Um, I've got a Hamel which is running on a Seiko VH31 movement. Uh, seconds hand appears to be moving around three to four times a second. Um, maybe three. It looks a little clunky for four. It's kind of tough to tell. Uh, I have a Bulova Precisionist. Running seconds on this guy is down here. Don't let that fool you. It is a chrono. So there's just, chrono seconds is this hand. Running seconds is down here. Running seconds is beating two times per second. And then I have a Marathon T-SAR Quartz here. Uh, this is running on an ETA F06 movement, um, and it's ticking one time per second. So if we use or go back to our mechanical automatic analogy, we'll look and we'll say, well, these guys are ticking with more than one second frequency, so they're probably more accurate than this one. Well, that's not really true. These guys have a similar accuracy, roughly, 10 to 15 seconds a month. This is going to be more accurate than this one. This is a much higher quality movement. Um, just as an aside, it's a high torque movement because it's got uh, tritium tubes on the hour and minute hand. Uh, and if I can, I'll get a shot of it. If not, um, when the second hand is ticking, if you could see it in slow motion, there's no bounce back, there's no shake. It's a very solid movement, very high quality movement. This is running on, as I said, a VH31. Quartz movement, uh, much lower cost, um, but you'd say, hey, Mark, it's ticking several times a second. That must mean it's more accurate. And that's what this video is about. That is not true. The fact, this is by far, in a way, by the way, the most accurate watch here. Roughly 10 seconds a year. Got that? 10 seconds a year. Roughly 10 seconds a month, year. That is impressive. Just keep it in consideration. A quartz. Uh, high accuracy quartz Grand Seiko, like the NF movements um, that are several thousand dollars. And this guy, by the way, is only like 600 bucks. 
or 700 bucks. Um, this Grand Seiko is accurate to 10 seconds a year um, as well, but that's a much higher cost movement. There's a lot more going on in those movements, of course. They're finished much more beautifully, etc. But anyway, if you have a precisionist watch that doesn't have a chrono, the second hand will move with a, with a movement that looks like this. Don't mind, don't worry about the fractures of a second over here. They, the second hand stops and starts several times per second, giving a very fluid appearance. And this is the appearance that many people think is what makes the precisionist so precise. Precise would be a bad word though if you're an engineer type. The word we're looking for is accuracy. Precision is the ability to reproduce something numerous times. Accuracy is the ability to get something to a known standard correct. Um, you'll notice that the second's fluid, fluid. Highly more accurate than this. Similar accuracy to this. So what's going on? Well, let's start with our friend the marathon. I'm gonna to try to keep it brief. So you gotta understand how a quartz watch works inside the watch. I've covered this in other watch and learn videos, by the way. Uh, there's a little oscillator inside. It's a tuning fork, actually, and it's carved out of quartz crystal. Quartz crystal is not an isotropic material. So they shave it in a way such that it resembles a tuning fork. And they take a battery, something like this, a little, whatever they call them, what are they, what are they now, silver oxide? Yes, yeah, silver oxide batteries. One and a half volt battery, and they apply it to some circuitry, and then they apply a voltage differential um, to the quartz oscillator. The oscillator sh vibrates at its resonant frequency. So the quartz crystal, uh, the material and the shape it's chosen will have a resonant frequency that, ev that it likes to vibrate at. Everything in life has a resonant frequency. Strings, guitar strings, you pluck a guitar string, it makes a sound. That hits resonant frequency. There's lots of other frequencies in it, but the resonant frequency is the one that comes out. Everybody else generally gets damped out really quick. Uh, so the battery applies a uh, potential to the uh, oscillator, the oscillator shakes. There's a little, call it a counter, computer, whatever. It's watching that crystal shake and after Two to the power of 15 oscillations, 30, roughly 32,000 times per second. So here's where that second hour thing comes in. 32,000 30, 32, times per second. It watches that crystal oscillate and it says to a little motor, hey, you, advance one second. 32,000 things have happened. And it says, okay, I'll advance a second. And then the counting starts all over again. And here you can already see, well, how can we make this tick in more than one second increments, but still keep it the same accuracy. Well, easy. Tell it after 16,000 oscillations, I want you to advance half a second. It's a motor, it can do whatever you want it to. You know, whatever obviously it's stator and stuff is set up for. You can tell it after roughly 8,000, I want you to advance a quarter second or after whatever the number, 10,000, I want you to advance a third of a second. And that's what this watch does. It just breaks down for the most part the oscillations of the quartz crystal, counts less of them, and just translates a portion of a second. Okay, got it, got it, good. Both of these run on 32,000 hertz oscillation, R roughly 30, two to the power of 15, it's a little more than 32,000. Bova, Bova's precisionist goes a step above this, okay? So they are highly accurate, as I said, 10 seconds a year, that is damn impressive. So how do they do that? Their tuning fork has three prongs, so it's a stiffer structure. The resonant frequency is two to the power of 18, or as you see on the dial, 262,000 hertz. A little more than 262, but whatever, we're rounding. 262,000 hertz, so after 262,000 hertz, this watch knows one second has elapsed. But nothing here is moving in one second increments. I've got something here running seconds moving in two, in half second increments, so after roughly, uh, what is it? After 131,000 oscillations, it's telling this stepper motor to advance half a second. Likewise, on the chrono, okay, it's telling this thing at whatever frequency it's vibrating at to advance those fractions of a second after a fraction of the 262 kilohertz has elapsed. That's all we're doing, okay? We are making it, making the seconds hand, the chrono seconds fluid for no other reason than to make it appear, I guess, that it's more accurate. And sure, you can now record uh, increments of a second much better, just like the Zenith El Primero uh, chronographs. Um, you can get much uh, finer measurement down to the fraction of a second. But same thing for running seconds. Running seconds, this could be ticking at one second increments. 
There's no reason for it to take in half second increments. Taking in half second increments does not make it more accurate. I want to make that clear. Clearly, because this runs on a different kind of oscillator, but it's nowhere near the accuracy of this, uh, roughly one twelfth the accuracy of this. And likewise, something like this with a high quality ETA, you know, quartz movement in it. So what are the drawbacks? Well, as I mentioned, these two watches run on a battery rough, roughly this size. This guy, because there's so much movement in the hands, runs on a battery roughly this size. So lithium, um, I believe, that, that, I think it's a CR2016. This is a 2025. It's what I had handy. But I believe it's a 2016. So it is a larger battery because there's much more of a draw on the power source to make the hand constantly move all the time, especially the running um, fractions of a second here. Um, but that's about it. I think it's kind of everything I wanted to cover. Is this, so the, really the main lesson to bring home here is that in a quartz watch, the more that the second's hand moves per second is not necessarily at all uh, a, uh, indicative of its overall accuracy. Instead, you got to kind of look at the movement and look at the specs. Yes, precision is highly, highly accurate, but it's not because of the fluidity of this rate of running seconds or chronoseconds. It does not matter. This has been Mark from LongerWatch.com talking about quartz watches and their accuracy. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, anything else you want to add? I'd love to read it. Put it down below, and I'll address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.